Good morning. My husband Craig and I have a friend who frequently, and perhaps always, starts his day with the exclamation, it's a great day to be alive. When I happen to hear it, his sentiment always makes me smile because it is so right on. Every day is a great day to be alive. But today is particularly great. It's a great day for the groundhog, who will likely get six more weeks to sleep. It's a great day for a Super Bowl party. And it's a great day to kick off a capital campaign. For those who I don't know, my name is Donna Marks, and I'm chairing the steering committee for the Downey's 2020 Awaken the Space Capital Campaign. When you came in this morning, you should have found a beautiful, colorful, exciting message posted all over the walls, on the screen, and in your seats that looks like this. This, my friend, is your invitation to be a part of the next step in Downey's journey to live out its mission. The mission we invoke every week, a mission to build a future that is welcoming, just, and sustainable. As you know, this mission statement was developed as part of a process whereby we as a congregation imagined what our future could look like. What we imagined was reflected in this vision statement. As we begin a conversation about conducting a capital campaign to make building improvements, it is appropriate to point out that among other things in this vision statement, we voiced the desire to offer our facilities as sacred space that would breathe life into our mission, specifically mentioning the desire to use our basement space for mission and outreach to the community. In a few minutes, as I share information about the campaign, you will see that that particular aspect of our vision is expressly reflected in the plans. But before I get to those details, I want to draw your attention to another part of our vision statement that is also extremely relevant for this campaign. At the very end of the statement, after we spell out the many things we hope to accomplish with our ministry, in a short section we may have the tendency to even overlook, we acknowledge this. We still have work to do. We will be asked to do more to sacrifice more, and to embrace the exciting change that is yet to come. Sometimes there will be pain and discomfort, but we welcome that too, safe in the knowledge that we care for each other as we continue to live out our mission. This campaign and the possibilities it can afford represent exactly the work, the sacrifice, and the exciting change that we saw for ourselves, even as we created our vision. So let's embrace it all as we embark on the journey to awaken the space. Now for the fun part. What does this journey have in store for us? So I realize that this is a very busy slide with all the circles but I make no apologies for it, even though I, may, I know it may be difficult to read. This slide is busy because it shows the many possible projects we hope to be able to do through the Awaken the Space capital campaign. Moreover, this slide also represents the imaginations of many people. Specifically, it represents the imaginations of those who have served on the campaign steering committee and its various work groups during this planning phase. I would like to thank those who have been involved and ask them to please stand so everyone will be able to see who they are. If you were involved, please stand up. Thank you.
Again, each of these bubbles on the slide represents a different aspect of the building improvements we hope will be possible through the campaign. The three primary areas we hope to address are referenced in the larger circles. The basement, mission and outreach center, enhancements to our sanctuary, and other facility optimization improvements. So I'm going to run through a number of slides that show conceptually what we hope to accomplish in these areas. First, we'll talk about the basement. You may or may not be aware that we have over 7,000 square feet of basement space in this building that is largely unused and that has been underutilized for many years. This slide shows the space directly below us, I think in approximately 1955, housing what appears to be a congregational meeting or dinner. I'm not sure how many of you folks remember those days. My history with Downey does not go back that far, but I've heard stories and I know that back in the day, the basement space was very well used. The second picture on the slide shows that same space as it looks today. It is this space that offers so much potential to us for mission and outreach center that we have envisioned. The two primary considerations we needed to address before we can utilize the basement space for any purpose, and for the pur purpose of the outreach center in particular, are providing a dedicated secure entrance to get to that space, and making sure that the space is accessible for people with mobility issues, as well as for the conveyance of equipment, supplies, etc. The committee considered options to address both of these issues. And although we originally looked at the possibility of an outdoor ramp on the downy side of the building, we have identified what we think is a more viable option of installing what is called a limited use, limited application, or LULA, L-U-L-A, elevator. The uh, highlighted area where the elevator is shown. These elevators look and ride much like traditional elevators but are a smaller, more affordable option for traveling minimal distances such as in our case just one floor up and down. As you can see from the slide we have identified a space for installing the elevator in the hallway inside the handicapped entrance to our building. This entrance and hallway are ideal as the dedicated entrance to the basement. First, the entrance is close to the handicapped parking lot, and the hallway has an existing staircase to the basement and can be secured from the rest of the building by installing security doors both at the entrance to the narthex and at the entrance to the education wing. The yellow highlights and the red font on the slide show these changes. On this next slide, it's a floor plan of the basement which offers a conceptual idea of how the space might be used. Please understand, this is just a concept and is not a plan set in stone. The first thing to note on this slide is the yellow highlighted space, and this is where the elevator would come down to the basement level. That is currently a mechanical one. The large room in the middle of the space, which was the room pictured on the earlier slide, is designated as a community room. Conceptually, this could be used for community group meetings, large gatherings, and a poss and possibly an intentional space for the food pantry distributions. Space for the food pantry storage is also depicted. 
The drawing is showing a dedicated space for our youth at the north end of the basement, Insta including installing secure access doors to this space. The south end of the drawing shows the possibility of having space to house overnight guests. Mission groups, homeless families, refugees are all possibilities. That space includes the installation of uh, emergency egress window exits, as well as ADA compliant showers. It's probably hard to see from the slide. The drawing further depicts, depicts the installation of two functional ADA compliant bathrooms, as well as space for a kitchenette and laundry facility. Another area of focus for the campaign is reviving our worship space to prepare for our growing and diverse congregation. This first slide is a depiction of a new concept for the front of the sanctuary that is particularly exciting for me. Not only is it beautiful, but its construction would also accomplish a number of objectives. And here's another picture of how that might look. It creates an attractive focal point for worship. It provides a partition that better separates the old chancel space behind it, while also allowing the possibility of opening that space to the sanctuary on occasion through a movable circle panel it calls for removing the current screen wall and raising the projection screen for better visibility of the screen itself, should you have my husband Craig or Kirk Friedley or Dennis Slaughter sitting in front of you, sometimes the screen is hard to see. It also offers better visibility of the chancel area to this entire side of the congregation. Lastly, it, in general, it opens up the chancel to new ways of using the space. This slide is an overlay to give you an additional example of how this new concept might look in our space. It does not actually show the design from the previous slide, which is a design being developed specifically for Downey, but uses a similar design that illustrates the overall effect changes would have for the chancel area. There are other changes related to those being made in the sanctuary that would allow us to better utilize existing space. These are shown here. First, the current placement of our baptismal is not ideal because of its distance from the sanctuary and the congregation. Plans are to move it forward so that when it is used, it serves as an integral part of our worship experience. Second, we have a great deal of storage space in the attic that is overhead that is underutilized because it is currently only accessible via a pull-down ladder, moving the baptistry allows us room to build a staircase to the attic, making it more practical and usable for storage of more items. And third, separating the old chancel space from the sanctuary would allow us to better use that space, perhaps as a prayer chapel, a quiet space for individuals, and possibly as a room for smaller gatherings, such as small weddings and funerals. A depiction of what that space might look like is shown on the slide. And the final improvement that we are hoping to make in our worship space is in the balcony. I see you up there. <laughs> if you have ever sat up there, you may recognize this view. Most of the chancel area is not visible from the balcony to, due to the existing wall. We would like to rework the wall so that it incorporates a see-through panel, which essentially allows those in the balcony to see 
what is going on in the worship service. A view of the front from the front of the sanctuary shows how the new wall would look. It also shows the addition of a new larger TV screen for those following the service from the front of the room. Further, we are proposing to separate the audiovisual section of the balcony from the seating area with the construction of a knee wall and shelving and all and also to slightly reconfigure the seating arrangement. This is how it's arranged currently. But with the, the rearrangement, all of these improvements in the balcony would essentially add a total of 40 to 50 viable seats to the seating capacity of the sanctuary. To give you a more concrete idea of what that means, there are approximately 46 seats on this side of the sanctuary. We would be adding that many more viable seats, nearly half again as many, to our sanctuary's capacity. Finally, I want to talk about space optimization in general and one additional objective that I haven't mentioned. This slide highlights the ways that changes I have discussed would result in the optimization of our existing space. In particular, access to unused basement storage, access to storage space in the attic will allow us to repurpose those parts of our building we currently use for storage and repurpose them for more optimal uses. Last but certainly not least, one such repurposing objective, not yet mentioned, is the hope that the combined improvements we make will free up room to create a dedicated nursery in the education wing. It's shown in green on the slide. Doing so will serve as an important sign to welcome young families who are seeking a church home with our congregation. Now that I have shared with you all the exciting things we hope to accomplish through the capital campaign, let me spend some time talking about the equally exciting topic of the campaign's fundraising goals. From the slides you saw, it should be evident that this project is substantial. Oops, sorry, premature. It should be obvious that this project is substantial. For that reason, the campaign is structured as a three-year campaign in that the fundraising goals are predicated on financial contributions being made over a three-year time period, 2020, 2021, and 2022. I will present the fundraising goals for the campaign in an incremental fashion, talking about what might be accomplished based on the dollar, dollar amounts that are generated. At the foundational tier, with funds of 200,000, these are the things we can do. We can accomplish what I'm calling the basement basics. Access, water remediation, secure doors at points of access, and ADA compliant bathrooms. These are the things that would be needed in the basement to use it for any purpose in the future. We could complete the work on the balcony, and additionally, we could augment the existing capital account fund for ongoing capital expenditures with a 10% uh, dollar amount, which would be $20,000. At the aspirational tier, with funds of $275,000, we can accomplish the items on the foundational tier as well as enhance the chancel with the partition and screen walls, update and furnish the community room to make it viable for use, and further augment the capital account with an additional 10% or $7,500. 
at what we are calling the inspirational tier. With funds of $350,000, we can accomplish the items under the previous two tiers, as well as develop the food pantry space. These are slightly different orders, but install a kitchenette, make improvements to the youth center space, relocate the baptismal and build the attic stairs, create a dedicated nursery, and again, further augment the capital account by another $7,500. And finally, at the transformational tier, with funds of $400,000 or more, dollars, we can accomplish all of the items under the previous tiers, along with the remaining hopes of having a hospitality room complete with safety exits and showers, installing a washer and dryer for laundry, creating a prayer chapel, and further augmenting the capital account with another $5,000 for a total of $40,000, and maybe more. We certainly have other dreams and possibilities that we could accomplish that haven't been mentioned. So it is clear, I think, that our hopes are high and that there is no doubt that these are big dollar figures. The good news is that it is doable. Using a formula based on four predictor models, the Church Extension Office, who has worked with many disciples' churches on capital campaigns over the years, has estimated that Downey's congregational fundraising potential would be between $250,000 and $400,000 over three years. That being said, still, reaching the fundraising goal will undeniably require sacrificial giving on all our parts. At the same time, our goals will also undeniably be transformational for this congregation. You will be asked to make your three-year commitment between now and February 23rd. And note that although your pledged amounts will be given over the course of three years, the Board of Church Extension would be making Downey a low interest loan based on the collective commitment amounts that would allow us to begin our work as early as this spring or summer. To make your pledges, you will be provided with a commitment card. These cards will be available soon. There will also be an online option for pledging, so stay tuned for that as well. Here we are. I realize that the information I have shared is a lot to digest at once. We will make this same information uh, available for your reference on Downey's website and we'll continue to share more information over the coming weeks. Also feel free to talk with me or the other folks who've been working on the project through the steering committee if you have questions or you have comments. In closing, I would like to remind you of a sermon Trey gave a few weeks ago where he talked about dreaming and he quoted words from T.E. Lawrence that resonated with me at the time. I'd like to take the liberty of repeating them to you today. All of us dream, but not equally. Those who dream by night in the dusty recesses in their minds wake in the day to find it was vanity. But the dreamers of the day are the dangerous ones, for they may act on their dreams with open eyes to make them possible. Let's be day dreamers. Thank you. Now the ushers will come forward to receive your offering. <laughs>